Greetings everyone. Let's chat about teaching geography with ArcGIS Online. Joseph Kursky here. I'm a geographer. I serve on the ESRI education team. Feel free to contact me at the email address listed here. Also, my colleagues and I blog weekly on the edcommunity.esri.com site. We talk about these very issues, teaching with and about GIS. I'm rather passionate about this subject. I have over a thousand geography and GIS related videos on the YouTube channel that you see listed here. So let's get started. Our goals for this session are to define ArcGIS. What do we mean by ArcGIS? Number two, illustrate how ArcGIS can be used to teach and learn geography via several focused investigations. And number three, I would like to pique your interest and give you enough tools so that you can get started teaching with these tools in your own setting. One of the ways that uh, I would like to go through this workshop is model what you would do in the classroom. One of the ways that you can get your students excited about engaging in spatial thinking and GIS technology is start a discussion in class name some key issues in our 21st century world. Now we could spend a lot of time on this, but you and your students would come up with something like this list that I have here. Biodiversity, climate change, sustainable agriculture, etc. All of our key issues in the 21st century world that we live in have geospatial components, right? They all have the where question and the whys of where question and thus they can be analyzed using a GIS or a geographic information system. Now what is GIS? GIS is a map, it is a multimedia tool, it is a technology, it is a career, it is a toolkit, uh, it's all of the above. If you want to take it apart the G part is the map. For example, this is a map of the University of Manchester campus where I was in 2012 at the Geographical Association's annual conference. I've got a push pin on the map and I've got some data associated with that push pin. That push pin is tied to a little geodatabase and in that geodatabase I have some basic information. A title as you see there, my photograph is actually linked to an online site where the photograph resides. In addition, this entire presentation that I'm running is tied to the subject that we're talking about. In other words, this is all live web mapping services that I'm using here. So what we're doing is I'm trying to illustrate the exact same thing that I want you folks to think about using in the classroom. In other words, this is ArcGIS Online. And this is the center city of Manchester. We're zooming out. Where is Manchester, by the way? Ah, we're going to start seeing some regions here as I zoom out. It is in north central northwest uh, England. It's in the United Kingdom. Okay, we can change our base map if we want to using tools that we've got inside ArcGIS Online. We can get rid of this photograph if you want. Right, so all of these things are linked to my particular presentation here. So I'm actually using the presentation mode inside ArcGIS Online, which is accessible via ArcGIS.com. So the point is, is that not only can I do this, but more importantly, you can do this, and more importantly, your students can do this in the classroom. They can use these presentation tools. So how does this look in, in reality? Let me shrink this window down a little bit so you can see what I'm seeing. And let me shrink the top down as well. All right. See this inside ArcGIS.com. I've got this presentation tool. I've created all these slides using live web mapping services hosted by ESRI. And I've got these slides in the bottom that I'm going through right now. Now the powerful thing about this, in my opinion, is first of all it's linked to live services. So at any point, let's say you're, you or your students is making a presentation on coastal erosion. Well, you can actually go to a place that's rapidly eroding right now, which is this uh, east coast of England right over here. And talk about rates of coastal erosion, do some measurement, that sort of thing. 
So it becomes a live presentation tool. Okay. Secondly, it's shareable. You can save this up on the ArcGIS Online Cloud, and then you can share it. All you need is the URL, and then you can be on any device and show that presentation. You can even do it on a smartphone. You can do it on a tablet computer. You can do it on a Mac. You can do it on a PC, a laptop, a desktop. You get the idea. So I'm actually modeling what I would like you to think about doing and have your students do in the classroom. Let's go back to our presentation. Maps throughout history have stirred imaginations and inspired explorations of the unknown. Right? What we're talking about here is using live maps, not just some map that you pull down from the wall and say, well, where is Yemen, and pull it back up and say, okay, end of story, next. No, what we're talking about here is using maps as an inquiry-based tool. We're using maps to investigate the planet from local to global scale, as I hope to illustrate in this series of presentations. ArcGIS Online is what I'm using right now. It's a cloud-based GIS. As I mentioned, it can be used on Mac or PC, even on mobile devices. There's no software to install because it's all running in the GIS cloud. You can choose from thousands of online maps, mash them up to create your own maps, or equally, if not more powerful, add your own content, which I will illustrate. So it could be tree species on your school campus. It could be dots illustrating historical buildings with photographs of those buildings that you've collected or your students have collected. It could be, based on what we were just talking about a moment ago, coastal erosion rates around the world and measuring that rate of erosion using historical and current maps and satellite imagery. And then you can save and share your maps. One of the things that's that's been a little clunky with GIS in the past is that GIS being a system, a geographic information system, it had a series and it has still a series of files associated with it. The database, the maps, the images, the uh, the links between the maps and the, and the database. And so it was hard to transport. Well, there were ways to do it and there still are ways to do it. But it was a little clunky uh, to do that. Now it's easy with this cloud-based GIS because you can share and save your maps and then go to another room, another country, another pl place in the world and pull up that map just like you left it at your own office or in your own classroom. That's really a game changer. That's really powerful. Now let's illustrate some examples here. Teaching with GIS. World cities analysis. For example, you can look at the distribution of world cities and look at how those cities changed over time in terms of population. What was the mean center of the center of population for the 10 largest cities in the world, for example, or in your own country? One of the other powerful things about GIS is that you can illustrate, bring to life, and understand current events. For example, teaching with GIS here, uh, about 18 months ago, there was a toxic spill in Hungary. So I created a lesson with some data showing why and how that particular reservoir burst and what communities, what rivers were downstream from that area and why they continue to grapple with the issue today. So even though that issue is not in world newspapers right now, those communities definitely are still grappling with the effects. So that's really powerful about GIS. You can, you can use it to address current issues, current events. Commonly, uh, GIS is used along with GPS, and GPS could be a standalone unit, it could be a GPS-enabled smartphone, to map things like uh, litter, trees, infrastructure on campus, or in your community. But I illustrate the on-campus one here because some people can't get off campus, and that's, that's fine. I'd like it if you could, but if you can't, there's lots of things to map on campus. And don't limit it to physical things. What if it's like social zones on campus? Where do the band students hang out? Where do the lacrosse students hang out, etc.? Also, you can use GIS to analyze field data, as I mentioned. Could be in 2D, it could be in 3D. This is a little screenshot from ArcGIS Explorer, a 3D GIS software package from ESRI. And to illustrate what I was talking about before, here's a lesson and a data set I put together on coastal erosion in Kent. This is the location of it, and zoomed in, here is what we have. What I had the students do is 
I had them trace using old ordnance survey maps and old aerial photos and current satellite imagery and current maps the shoreline as it retreated and continues to retreat. When the students see, as I'm pointing right here, whole villages in 1850 and 1860 that are now part of the North Sea, their eyes light up. It's, wow, and look at the rate. It's X meters per year? How much is a meter? Wow, that's incredible. What effect did this seawall and this jetty up here have on the rate of coastal erosion on the east side or the west and the west side of this particular area? So illustrating what I was talking about before, where is this area in relationship to London, etc.? Well, let's just zoom out a bit and see. So this is in Kent, and uh, London is, is over here. There we go. So that's where this is located. Excellent. All right. So that's an illustration of diving out of the presentation to illustrate a point that you or your students want to make. All right, so last slide here. Let's go ahead and talk about the geographic inquiry process. GIS is very conducive to the geographic inquiry process. What do I mean by that? Well, it's where we ask a geographic question. Now, think outside the box here, folks. I'm not just talking about in geography, although that is the focus of our presentation today. But think about doing this in history, in science, biology, physics, chemistry, mathematics. You're asking some sort of a where-based question you're acquiring geographic resources, maps, d tables of data, data from your phone, etc. Then you're exploring that geographic data, you're analyzing that geographic information, you're making presentations, you're, you're communicating the results, and you're acting on your geographic knowledge. And that might lead to additional questions. And so this process is somewhat circular. Or maybe it's, a, it's like a, a, a hubcap rolling along, right? It's circular, but it also keeps moving forward. All right, well, that's part one of our teaching geography with ArcGIS Online. Thanks.